The worst day of my life began beautifully. I exercised at 530. After rising, I ran three miles. It was foggy and I was alone on the track. After three miles, I cooled down by running straight and two more bends. I showered at home. Sarah put my muffin and chocolate milk on the counter when I got dressed for work. I kissed and cuddled with her while drinking milk. She cuddled with me despite complaining about wrinkling and destroying her lipstick. She still made my heart race when I saw her. At 31, she looked better than ever. Her fat was healthier than the slender lady I brought to the prom as a senior. Her height was just over five feet, yet she proved that dynamite comes in small packages. The rising star at her law firm was successful. After our daughters were born, she gained a lot of attention at huge corporations, and they spoke about a partner she was making almost as much as me, and things were going great for me. I was head of the architectural department in a large engineering and architecture firm after my sixth promotion. Kissing her again, I grabbed my suitcase and muffin. I'm leaving. Good day. Beautiful. Waved goodbye. Kissed me as she gathered the daughters for school. She departed for work an hour after me, so I went to bed. My second daughter was in the garage. Six months had passed since I bought it. Burnt orange charger. Hellcat. I drove charger from 16. Father helped me buy a 1968 RV that sits beneath the carport. I would occasionally take it out and drive to hear the massive Hemi through the Flowmaster pipes. It lagged behind the Hellcat. I enjoy Mustang and Camaro owners brag about their cars. One engineer boasted about his 500-horsepower Shelby GT 352 days earlier. His goal was to impress Maria from the next office. It made me happy that the Hellcat could produce over 700. All the new pony vehicles were nice, but they weren't like the Hellcat Charger or Challenger. I like hot rodders. All of us have kids and prefer to criticize others. Great day at work. I finished the powertrain our design team was working on about 1.30 and took the afternoon off. I watched my kid. As I put it in the garage on a sunny afternoon, I could polish it. Sarah texted me about being late. She was at a conference and would return around 5.00. I baked chocolate chip cookies at 330. I had two pans and the plate on the bar. Two tiny angels' voices came from the living room when the door opened. Two tiny blonde pixies dropped their backpacks and flew across the kitchen to hug me. Condre and Carmen. I had daughters home. They're identical twins and the prettiest babies on earth. Mommy's hair, freckles, and large blue eyes, but my complexion. Sarah can tan, but I'm olive. They took my shade. It contrasted their hair and eyes. They were eight-year-old heartbreakers later. They were cute. Only with each other, they fought like hornets. I have Sarah, too. They were honey and silk and never criticized each other. Both of them were difficult for Sarah. They loved their mother, but when she corrected one of them, the other would always side with her sister and argue as strongly as their mother. They kept interrupting each other to tell me about their day. They liked their new teacher after a week of school. Miss Brooks was new to our area, and I had never met her. My girls were impressed by her. As I fed them chocolate chip cookies and big glasses of milk, I smiled stupidly. I had angels who could do no wrong. After eating three cookies, they went upstairs to do homework. I required homework at home. The rest of the evening was up to us. The last cookie sheet was removed from the oven and placed on a tray. I climbed the stairs when Kimber called. I felt an odd vibration on my phone. I took it out and got a text. The number appeared familiar, but wasn't in my contacts. It was checked when I climbed stairs. You excelled today. I read, looking forward to tomorrow. I liked the comment, but I had no afternoon commitments other than work, so I had no idea who sent me the SMS. Someone probably had the wrong number. I decided to prank them. I appreciate it, honey, I wrote. Tell me the time and place again. My text was answered instantly. Using cell phone? Be sure to remove. You can't make Sheldon suspicious too soon. Sure, I froze at our house halfway to the girl's door. I'm Sheldon. Sheldon Clanton, my number is nine. Sarah has an eight ending one. Girl numbers end in seven and six. A significant mistake was made. Numb, I couldn't move. Carmen looked at me. Daddy, help us with math. Dad, what's wrong? Both girls stood and watched me. My expression must have stunned them, shaking off cobwebs. Nothing, gals, just horrible news. No worries, babies. I lied. Look at math. Five minutes later, the garage door opened. Sarah home. After pacing, she peeked inside. For dinner? She asked. Hi, sweeties. They leapt to hug her. 
They returned and sat down, and Sarah hugged me behind the neck. She petted my ear. She said she'd shower. After arithmetic, I asked the kids if they wanted to go get amazing pizza. I was waiting in the car for them after they changed into shorts and t-shirts. Don't mom arrive? asked Carmen. Her day was long, told them. Let her relax. Turn off the phones and just me and my angels tonight, okay? They agreed and we had fun. My phone vibrated 12 times because I forgot to turn it off. I ignored it and played games and ate lousy pizza. We arrived home around 930 to find Sarah asleep on the couch with her phone. My finger was to my lips as we tiptoed upstairs. They went to bed and I got tomorrow's clothes. I locked the spare bedroom. I stayed up till midnight and heard a soft door knock. Shell, what's up? I heard stage whispers. Open the door, where did you go? Why the hell is the door locked? Why are you there? I remained silent. She knocked repeatedly. She contacted me a dozen times before giving up. She plainly didn't want to wake the girls. I heard her disappearing down the corridor to our room. It was our room. I had no idea how it was now. It was 530 when I got up and took my clothing to the garage. I heard her alarm. I drove back. As the garage door opened, I saw her drive to the park. I ran at the park instead of the school track that day. My phone rang 12 times, but I ignored it. I showered and dressed for work. I asked my friend Marcus for his Ultima at midday. Entering that thing felt like betraying all I believed in. However, it resembled the other small box cars on the route, and I wanted to fit in. Sarah's car was outside the office, so I waited across the street. I knew no one could see me through the dark windows. Sarah was out and in her BMW at 230. We drove into the suburbs as I followed her. When she entered a suburb, I saw where we were going. My brother Mark resided there. What the hell? That sucked. It made sense why the number looked familiar. I never liked him and rarely socialized. I didn't like seeing each other solely at family functions. I hit him two years ago when he touched Sarah's behind. We hadn't talked since. His wife and Sarah spent much time together. I parked across the street and she entered his driveway. At exit, she seemed sad. I left and circled back after she entered the house. I visited hundreds of times. What I saw shocked me. Mark's wife, Chloe, lay beside the pool. It was becoming stranger. She was great. She was classy. Her class was evident. As the bat gate closed, she glanced up at me in panic. Sheldon, the woman gasped. Why are you here? Chloe got up and ran toward me as I climbed the deck steps. Please don't enter. Something to say. Wait. Though the screen was closed, I could hear their talk. He was trying to soothe Sarah, who was agitated. Something's wrong, she said. He slept in the spare room last night. He went without speaking to me this morning. Mark, it was wrong. I need more time to train him to order. We must let Chloe work on him. He thinks she's gorgeous. I adore my spouse and won't risk my marriage and kids. He promised her she could persuade him. We've seen his Chloe gaze. No need to persuade me. We've discussed this a dozen times, and you want it. I like it. I don't want to lose everything. He won't speak if Chloe is entertained. We'll switch occasionally. Maybe we will since you're here. I know you want it. Yes, but not much. If Shell discovers this, he'll die. I won't. Mark. They were in the living room when I looked over. She was pulled to him and kissed. She hesitated before letting him kiss her. I shot pictures and a video. She stopped him from taking down her dress zipper. I saw enough. I entered through the screen door and they backed away. Sarah yelled, No, no, God, not what you think, Sheldon. Shell, I'm sorry. Mark was fleeing as I approached. I moved to pass them to the front door. Sarah ran behind me and hugged me. Shell, let's go home. Not what it seems. I'll clarify everything at home. No further comment. I left and entered Ultima. Three of them broke out and chased me. I took her to the office and gave Marcus the keys. Thirty minutes later, my phone rang. I disregarded. Five minutes later, my secretary called. Your wife is on line three, she said. Say I'm unavailable, I said. The day was spent staring at the computer. Your sister-in-law is calling. I heard five minutes later, asking her to connect. Do you need anything, Chloe? Must we discuss this? She said. Why aren't you home? You must consult Sarah. She'll explain all. Mark and I will attend. We'll discuss it maturely. Shell, your brother and wife, you must relax. Why does bullying annoy you? They always advise calmness. It enraged me. I informed her I'm brotherless. 
If that asshole is in my house when I return, I'll pull his balls off. If I see you, I'll slap you out. Never show or speak to me again. Chloe advises Ron to run if he sees me. I hung up. Twenty minutes later, Dad called. Sheldon, what's up? He inquired. Chloe and your brother are here. You allegedly threatened them. Sarah called sobbing and yelling. I didn't get her. You did what? Sarah is enjoying Mark and she and CeeLo plan to trap me into a wife exchange. I have no brother, Dad. If I hear you, let any of the three into your house after today, I'll have no father. I won't have parents if my mom lets them in or you utter their names. Guess what? You raised an asshole. Choose a side. Yeah, no grandchildren either. I hung up because you can't talk to me as he did. Maria entered and requested something, but I couldn't hear. Sheldon, I inquired. More loudly, she said. I started. I'm sorry, Maria. You said what? Are you okay? She asked. It was impossible to halt my tears. My shoulders were embraced by her. Was someone killed? She asked. I'm sorry, Sheldon. It was who? It was probably my marriage and family. I buried my face in my hands and cried as I told her the whole thing. My ten years flew by. I spent ten lovely years with my love. I believed she loved me. Did she sleep with him? She asked. Think so, I said. She would repeat tonight. She wanted to cancel because she assumed I knew them. Maria, why would she? My entire being loved her. I would have died for her. How could she hurt our girls? What did the two girls do to deserve this? Go home, Sheldon. Talk to her. Discover these answers, she said. You'll never rest till you leave. Hugged her. Thank you, Maria. You're friendly. Please don't share. She seemed hurt. Jesus, Sheldon, how could you say that? You know I won't tell. She hugged me again after my apology. I understand your anger. Just go home and figure it out. Since returning to work, my phone has been ringing. It rang all the way home till I switched it off, pulling inside the garage. Sarah ran out. I sat by the door, thinking while she stood there. She pounded the window with her fist. Sheldon, please talk to me outside. I beg, just let me talk. She tried to hug me when I opened the door. I repelled her. I suppose she was stunned. I never touched her in our lives and wasn't violent. Don't touch me, Sarah. Told her. You make me want to shower, she cried. I won't. Shell, please come inside so we can discuss. You have until the females return. Told her. When they get home, we'll finish the talk and pretend everything's fine. Do you comprehend? They don't participate. We're done if you offend them. Too little time. She wept. Can't we discuss after they sleep? No idea, I said. It depends on what you say before I pick them up. You have 1.5 hours. Make the most. I will, she promised. Can we sit down? She patted the seat next to her on the couch in the living room as I followed her. Sitting in the chair across from the coffee table, she cried again and covered her face with her hands, sat back and waited. A waste of time. Finally, I told her. Took a towel from the bar and cleaned her face, sitting down. She rarely spoke. She cried a lot. I'm sorry, Shell, she said. My mistake was big. I never expected you to know. I adore you. You love me enough to play with my brother, I requested. Avoid that, she begged. It sounds cheap and filthy. Cheap and filthy, I said. You can't ribbon it. You've done that. You would have done it today if I hadn't caught you. It was unplanned. Just happened. I'm sorry. She cried harder. Not sure what I was thinking. Shell, I was stupid before marriage. You know, I met Mark before you. I slept with him occasionally. We occasionally went out after he met Claw. All three of us. Shell, you think she's lovely. Four of us could, I thought. My only task was keep him entertained. For her, I finished. No, I wanted us to adore each other. We could be together. I swore to include you, Shell. Your afternoon entertainment was arranged. No, he was told I wouldn't. She cried. You thought I knew. If I hadn't known, I wouldn't. It's irrelevant. You knew. How did you know? Why does it matter? You'd entertain the weird bastard, I said. What does that do to you, Sarah? Please, Shell. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not sure what I was thinking. I didn't expect this. It needn't be so ugly. Can be fun. I'll stay. You can sleep with cloth. I raced to the restroom to vomit when bile rose in my throat. She offered me a washcloth and stroked me after I spit up. So I pulled her away and rinsed my mouth. We sat down again. Was what you stated heard? I requested. It may be entertaining. You'll say it was sex next. God, Sarah, are you aware of your cliché status? It makes me want to bash you up. Yeah, Shell, do what you want. I won't speak. I deserve it. Please forgive me. I didn't expect you to know. 
Before you knew, I didn't consider how much it would hurt. You departed with the females last night. I sensed trouble. I knew you were hurting when you wouldn't sleep in our bed. I knew you learned. I tried to apologize, but was denied entry. I woke up early to apologize and ask for forgiveness. You fled before I could. I should have waited until... I implore, Shell. You still adore me? Sarah, damn you. What can you ask me after what you did? I adored you yesterday morning, last week, and for ten years. That continued. You did? How dare you expect my faith after that? You expect me to believe anything you say? No idea, she cried. I'll repay your confidence. I'll demonstrate my reliability. I'll do anything. Tell me what to do. Do you wish to entertain Chloe or others? We'll not speak. Please give me another chance. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a mistake. Have you never erred? Yes, I made many mistakes. I make mistakes daily. I failed to pay my cable payment last week. I splattered garage floor paint. I remembered my marriage. And neither did you. That wasn't wrong. A betrayal. It would have been wrong to remove him from me. Sarah, I don't know how to react. Explain how I'll recover. She wept, but I'll do anything. We can obtain help. We'll consult a counselor. We'll wear bracelet. Quitting my work. I'm desperate, Shell. I never meant to hurt you. I don't want to lose the females. Let me try to fix this. My God. The girls, I said. I must retrieve them. Clean up, Sarah. I swear to God I'll kick you out of this house if you're not under control when I get back. Not a hint. Do you comprehend? Yes. Take a bath. I pledge to behave. When they sleep, may we talk again? Sarah, you can't guarantee me anything. Please don't promise, I yell. Lost the only important promise. Give up everything else. Remember that promise? She collapsed. Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot. Shell. Can we talk later? Yes, we can. I'm leaving now. Get clean, Sarah. I arrived at school ten minutes late to pick up the girls. Their bench was in front of the school. A woman sat between them, arm around their shoulders. She was a young black or Hispanic woman. She appeared to be in her twenties. Everything hit me as I approached. This woman was simply lovely. I had never seen such big, warm brown eyes on a tall, slender woman. There were gold and sparkles in those eyes, and the mop of shining hair on top of her head framed one of the most beautiful faces I'd ever seen. Her skin was light coffee, colored and flawless. She smiled as I approached, and her face lit up like a beacon. Her teeth sparkled, and she nudged the girls. They looked up and saw me approaching. They jumped up and flew across the grass, and an avalanche of little girls descended on me. Your late daddy, Kimber, said, I'm sorry, baby. I told her I lost track of time. It won't happen again. It's okay, Carmen said. Miss Brooks stayed with us. She rose to her feet from the bench, and I watched mesmerized as she came over and held out her hand to me. Mr. Clanton, I'm Carly Brooks, she said. I adore your girls. I'm so lucky to have them living in my room, Sheldon. I took her hand. She had long, thin fingers, and they were cool and soft in my hand. I realized I'd been holding on too long, and I shamefully dropped her hand. Thank you so much for waiting with them. I'm so sorry, Miss. Brooks. I could barely speak. This woman was a walking wet dream. Carly, she corrected me. Sheldon, do you think I could talk to you for a minute? Girls, can you wait in the car for a minute? I requested. Just a minute. They hugged the teacher and, holding hands, walked to the car. She smiled after them. I hope you're very proud of them, she said. They're the nicest kids in the school. That's why I wanted to talk to you. They were upset this morning. They told me that their mom was crying this morning and that she cried all the way to school until she dropped them off. Is everything okay at home? Did something die in the family or something? I swore to myself. No, Carly. Not everything is fine. Everything will be and I'll make sure it never happens again. Their mother and I are having a lot of trouble right now. I'll try to keep them out of it. I'm very sorry. Can you talk to me about it? She asked. I'm a good listener, and I'll do anything for those little girls. Thank you. But I can't talk right now. I told her it hurts too much, and I don't know where this is going yet, but I appreciate it. Maybe when things are smoother, I'll tell you. But right now it hurts too much. She reached out, and her fingers gently stroked my jaw. I realized she was very tall. Her eyes were almost level with mine, and my height was 6'3". She smiled, her hand dropped, and she walked back into the building. I stared after her for another minute. She was poetry in motion. She looked over her shoulder and smiled when she saw me watching her. My face flushed, and I walked to my car. 
I felt the touch of her fingers on my cheek for hours more. The munchkins chatted happily until we were almost home. Daddy, mom was crying this morning, Carmen said. Were you mean to her? I laughed. Maybe a little, I said. I won't do it again. Okay, okay, she said. I don't like it when she's sad. Bree doesn't like it either. I know, I'm sorry about that. It's just that people fight sometimes, you know? I know, Daddy, Campbell said. Carmen's mean to me, all the time, but I don't give her a reason to cry. Hey, you're the one who's a big meanie, Carmen objected. I had to laugh. None of you are mean. It's just that people fight sometimes. I'll try to be kinder. You're always nice to us, she said. When we got home, Sarah was still in the bathroom, but when she came out, she was quite normal. Her eyes were a little puffy, but she smiled and hugged the girls. We had a nice dinner and they sat on the floor at our feet and we watched TV. It was a nice time, but I was dreading bedtime. I read to them and kissed them goodnight. I saw Sarah watching them from the doorway with a sad smile on her face. She was gone when I turned out the lights and was waiting at the foot of the stairs. Do you want to talk in bed? She asked. I'm not sleeping with you, I said. They'll find out if you don't, she said. Avoid that. She'll make me feel as good as I can. I need you to hold me. I need you to not be... whatever. I caught myself. Tears ran down her cheeks. We undressed in silence, and I lay on my back, staring up at the ceiling. I could feel the bed shaking and knew she was still crying. Shell, do you want to make love? She asked quietly. I'll let you. I know you've always wanted to. Her voice trailed off. Jesus Christ, I exploded. I'm going to the spare bedroom. She grabbed my hand. Please, Shell, forgive me. Don't go away. Please, just talk to me. I won't hurt you. I swear, I don't want to lose you. I don't know what to do or say. I'm just floundering. Please just punish me and then forgive me. I'll never. I know I won't make any promises. Shell, do I have a chance to make it up to you? Do I have a chance at all? Honestly, I don't know how, Sarah. I said I despise you so much. It's killing me. I've loved you since we were in high school. I wish it weren't so. It wouldn't hurt so much if I didn't. What can we do? How can we go back to the way things were? How do I know you won't just entertain a gas station attendant to pay the bill? Damn you, Shell, that's not fair. I'm not a whore, and you know it. You're the only man I've ever loved in my life. Don't you dare tell me what's fair, I growled. Is it fair that you've been having fun with this asshole for God knows how long? Is it fair that a man who has loved you since we were in high school has to live with the fact that his wife is a slut who tried to sway him to do the same? Is it fair that our girl's mom is a cheating bitch? Is it fair that you're a liar and a cheater? Screw you, Sarah. Don't tell me who you are. I know who you are. Screw this. It's not going to work. I don't want to hear your bullshit. You won't even take responsibility for what you've done. I want you out of here in the morning. You're going to tell the girls you're going to stay at your sister's for a few days. I don't care what excuse you give them. Make something up. You're a good liar. Just leave when I get home tomorrow. She started crying hysterically. I'm sorry I said that, Sheldon. Please don't make me leave. No. You made your own choice to be an abomination with asshole without thinking of me or the girls. I'm making this one, and I'm not considering you. This is my house. I inherited it from my grandparents, and I don't want you living here. When can I come back? She cried. No idea. Maybe never. Don't make me angry, Sarah. Maybe I'll get better after a while. Maybe you'll figure out how to fix things, or maybe I'll figure something out. I can't breathe when you're here. Every time I look at you, I see that bastard unzipping your dress. I'm going to go to the couch. I left her crying on the bed and took my pillow and went to the couch. The next morning I left again at 5.30 and she still wouldn't get up when I picked up the munchkins after school. They told me that she had gone to Aunt Sophie's to help her while she was sick. They were a little upset because they were supposed to run a five-kilometer race with her on Saturday. I told them I would work out with them instead, and they got excited. Sarah called them, and they had a long talk about the eight. She texted me, and all she said was, I'm sorry. On Friday, I took the day off, and I got a call from Sophie. She wanted to come and talk to me, and I agreed. She's Sarah's younger sister, and I've always had a soft spot for her. When I opened the door, she was angry. She came in and poured herself a cup of coffee. She was about 14 when Sarah and I got together, and she was just an angel. After Sarah and I got married, she spent more time at our house than at her parents, and we were still very close. 
What is wrong with you, Sheldon? She spat out. Sarah is dying in my house, and you just sit here and let her. She won't stop crying the whole time she's there. Come and pick her up and bring her home. Did she tell you why she's there? She made a mistake and slept with them. Sheldon, you forgave her last time. What's the big deal? I couldn't believe my ears. What the hell are you talking about? Last time, said I. I felt very calm. Her eyes got big and she covered her mouth with her hand. My God, the woman gasped. She never told you, did she? Sophie, tell me what the hell you're talking about, I said. No, she said. I'll let her tell you. She promised me she would tell me. And she said she did. And you forgave her. That's all I want to say. I'm sorry, show. I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I came in here in a semi-conscious state. And I apologize. I'm going to talk to her. She kissed my cheek, and not ten minutes later, the doorbell rang. It was John and Alicia, Sarah's parents. It wasn't nice. I invited them in, and we sat down at the bar to drink coffee. We're very disappointed in you, Sheldon, Alicia began. Are you disappointed in me or Sarah? I requested. You kicked her out of the house, John said. Why would we be disappointed in her? Did she tell you why? I requested. We haven't seen her, said Alicia. Why don't you tell us why? Look, I love you both, but I'm not telling you anything I said. If you want to know, ask her. In the meantime, maybe you should do a little fact-checking before you get disappointed in someone. Now you're welcome here any time. You can see the girls any time you want. But don't come back here to have this conversation with me again. Find out what's going on, and then we'll talk once. After that, it'll be over. It's really none of your business. Now I have some things to do, so I have to go. Finish your coffee. Wait for the girls to get home. Whatever. But I gotta go. I left them there with their mouths open as I got into the Hellcat. My mind was reeling. The conversation with Sophie had knocked me out. And then John and Alicia arrived. Apparently there had been another incident, and Sophie knew about it. Sarah had promised her that she would tell me about it, but she hadn't. It made the situation look even worse. What am I supposed to do now? Driving my baby girl always gave me at least temporary peace of mind, and I pulled onto the freeway heading north. There wasn't much traffic, and I had the hedges engine slightly ajar. I looked down and saw I was doing 85. It felt good. I looked in the rearview mirror. There was a new yellow Mustang GT driving behind me. It was too close for the speed we were traveling at, and it pissed me off. I pressed down on the gas pedal and that big hemi howled. The supercharger roared and I took off like I was being launched. This engine burns 1.5 gallons of gasoline per minute at full throttle and 650. I'll be out of torque. Spins the wheels like a freight train. The Mustang immediately began to fall behind. It held on until we passed 120. But by the time I got to 150, it was just a yellow dot. I stopped at the next exit. I needed gas, and there was a convenience store there. I pulled up to the pump and held up my credit card. I heard a motor rumbling on the other side of the pumps, but I didn't pay much attention to it. Sheldon, is that you? I heard a woman's voice say. I looked over, and there was a yellow Mustang. Carly Brooks was getting out of it. She was walking down the pumps toward me. She was wearing a button-down shirt and jeans. I noticed she was wearing white flip-flops, and her toenails were painted the same yellow color as her car. She looked absolutely stunning. Miss, Brooks, why aren't you teaching my daughters how to conjugate verbs? I laughed. She walked closer and leaned against a pillar. I took a personal day, she said. I thought it was your car that whizzed past me. I tried to catch up with you and wave. God, you're so hot. I didn't know you liked cars. I said, that's a beautiful pony you have. Do you have them complete? No, I put a lot of labor into him. I can't believe you just walked away and left me like that. It's the coolest muscle car ever made. I told her I like the Mustang, though. Why are you here? I live here, she said. And you? Just trying to blow off steam. I told her that rough patch I was telling you about has turned into a mountain, and I just need to clear the brain fog a little. Well, if we drove as fast as we did, we could both go to jail. She laughed. How about I buy you a cup of coffee, and you let some of that fog out in my direction, miss? Brooks, I don't think you want to hear about my problems. Told her. I told you to call me Carly, she said. Come on, there's a Starbucks right down the street. I'll tell you a story and you tell me a story, okay? I agreed and pumped her gas. I followed her and we went inside. 
I ordered my usual triple espresso, and she ordered something like a latte with lots of foam. She took a sip and looked at me. I couldn't keep from laughing. I have a mustache, don't I? She grinned. Yes. I talked to them away with my napkin. Her huge brown eyes looked at me with an unusual look. What's going on with you? She asked. Why were you driving so fast? Driving fast for me is like a shot of whiskey for other people, I said. When I'm upset, I drive a run. It calms me down and helps me think. Why do you need a shot glass? She asked. I'm not trying to pry. It's just that you look like you need someone to talk to. Carly, are you married? No, but I was engaged once. Can you tell me why you're no longer engaged? I requested. Yes, but I think if you don't burden me, it's only fair, she replied. She was sipping her latte and I could tell she was gathering her thoughts. I can't do that, she finally said. I'm sorry, Sheldon, I have to go. She stood up and I could see tears streaming down her high cheekbones. I stood up and walked over to her. I pushed her back into the booth and sat down next to her. She protested, but I ignored her. I took one of her long, thin hands in mine. I'm sorry, Carly, told her. I didn't mean to upset you. You don't have to tell me anything. You don't want to. I didn't make a deal. I was just trying to find a place to start. It's okay, she said. If you don't let me out, I'm going to crawl under the table. I'm sorry, Sheldon, but I can't do that right now. It's too painful for me. I let her out. She stood up and hugged me. I just have to go, she said. I'm sorry, I couldn't help you. It's okay, told her. Will you let me buy you another cup of coffee sometime? I promise I won't make you cry. Usually girls have to get to know me a little before I make them cry. A moist laugh escaped her. Not you. Yeah, talk to me. I adore your daughter, Sheldon. I recognize your fatherly qualities. As she exited, the yellow Mustang screeched its tires. I went to grab the girls. We headed to Red Lobster after schoolwork. Shrimp abounded. Everyone loves shrimp. We ended up with a shrimp graveyard on our table. The next day was a five-kilometer race I wanted to run. Sarah was absent, so I ran. We had water and Gatorade on a tiny table at the three-kilometer mark. Once there, runners might grab a bottle and leave. An additional worker hadn't arrived yet. The road was blocked by trees, but I heard a car pass. A yellow pony drew up and Carly stepped out, shocking me. She was stunning. The girls ran to hug her and squealed. She was led to her chamber by the arms. She looked uncomfortable. Hey, Carly, greeted her. How are we so fortunate? She grinned and relaxed. Virtue, reward. The girl grinned. Our conversation was fun. I heard a car approaching, massive Ford truck. The door must have been five feet tall, recognized. The baseball coach owned it, aging high school athletics hero. All know him. He pictured God's gift to the world and women from his sports star days 15 years ago. His head was shaven and he was six feet tall, was athletic. He walked with his arms practically parallel to the ground to show his strength. His name was Hawk, Falcon, or any prey bird. He went to the table. How are you, Mr. Harrier Carly, she said. Avoid calling me by my first name again. We're enemies. I'll report a hostile workplace if you call me honey again. His mouth fell. You're lesbian? He was furious. That could have been the only reason any woman didn't kneel before him. Carly mentioned your wife didn't complain when I attended her house. He retracted his hand as the girls gasped. As I stood, he glanced at me. Even if he outnumbered me by 20 pounds in 10 years, he was a bully and didn't like surprises. He returned to his truck because he didn't know me. She apologized to the girls. Since I arrived, that man has hit on me and I'm sick of it. No justification. Sorry, he hugged her. Okay, Miss Brooks. No matter, we dislike him. Follows all the cross-country team's young females. Creepy guy. Carly looked at me and we laughed. Please remind me not to annoy you. Your cruel streak, I told her. The first candidate, Carly, arrived, and we were busy as bees. The girls were excited to take Carly for wings later when I asked. She came with us and we cleaned up at home. World-class wings are served at a place I know. A former friend ran Hackett's. He was an elderly Memphis black man who made wings. We had fun, and I didn't want it to end. The girls and Carly took my mind off Sarah, and it felt nice to be human for a while. But it didn't last. My phone had 12 missed calls from her when I arrived home. It lit up like a Christmas tree when I turned it on after being off all day. Called her after putting the girls to bed. Shell, I need to chat. Come over, she asked. You have a date? 
asked. Asshole. Overworked? She wept. Can I come over, Sheldon? I explain all. Okay, I said, come. I heard her open the door 30 minutes after I finished chatting. When she entered, I considered changing the locks. It looked like she was broken. I repelled her hug. I'll vomit if you touch me, Sarah. Just told her. She sobbed and sat down. Can we talk? She sobbed. Let me say it. Again, I sat across from her at the table. Her eyes were on the floor. Sophie's words are known. It was hard to hear her over his soft voice. Decided to confess? Asked. Yes. I hesitated to tell you. Your hatred was my expectation. Shell, she caught me. If I didn't, she'd tell you. I promised her but couldn't. You looked so joyful I couldn't imagine how it felt. Just, I won't announce it. Drunk. Our school Christmas party was one night. Each child went home. They took you. We drank. Catholic school life is familiar. Father Peter drank too. Chloe and Mark attended, started talking to him, always expressing his affection for me. How long has no one but you told me that? Shell, I'm aging. Not as lovely as before. Over the years, how many men have hit on me? When men find me lovely, I like it. Danced with them. I'll never be reached. Knowing they wanted to made me feel fantastic. Here was Barbara Jansen. Hey, remember her? We were seniors when she was a freshman. The lovely blonde always thought she was exceptional. Her husband was an all-girls school teacher. I was told I looked aged. Drunk, it hit me hard. Mark then invited me to dance. He was still nice and lovely and kept complimenting me. I kept hearing how good education was. He convinced me to go on the back porch while I was inebriated. I felt vulnerable despite its stupidity. Glad I made him happy, deeply sorry. I was ashamed of myself. I couldn't believe I'd do that. Really sorry. Sophie trapped me on the porch with her boyfriend, telling you was her threat. She insulted me and said I was crazy for flirting with you. She wouldn't tell you if I did. Couldn't say. So embarrassed. I feared your departure. She knew I told you. I was forgiven. I regret not telling you. Then it began again. I botched it, Shell. I ruined it as a foolish bitch. Really sorry. Self-hatred. How can I continue if I made you despise me? You're my only love. Neither will I. Don't hate me, Shell. Just forgive me. I promise to God I'll labor like a slave to make amends. Do anything you say. Please stay. Please keep my girls. Anything I can do, I'll attempt anything. You'll never accept it, I know. Your options are limited, Sarah. I didn't have time to decide. Can I trust you? You lied to me countless times. I was cheated on when you said you were working late. Imagine being forgiven and having to work late. What must I consider? Can I stop wondering if you're having fun with a guy? That works how? Uncontrollably, she cried. Shell, I do not know. I only know I adore you and the girls. See what I did. Our family has suffered from my foolishness. No one loves you more. You want to... Still adore me? That's Sarah's issue. I adore you. You may not have loved me. You may be wrong about everything. I'm sure not. I presume you lie about everything. Are you sincere? No idea. I won't believe whatever you say. This is your chance. If you're hiding, tell me. It won't change. This is the most I can get mad at you. You have one shot. Dedicated to God. Truthful. Her words. Nothing more. I adore Sheldon. No one else loves me. I never did. I succeeded. Just, Sarah, don't say that. She was interrupted. You planned and cheated. Wasn't. No. Okay, that's not what you want to hear. Just know that it meant nothing to me. Love neither Mark nor Chloe. You might want to join us. Yes, you never want to. What a mistake. That meant something to me. Just told her. It was meaningless to you. If I was having fun with a stranger, would you care? She changed her statement. I said the same thing to her. Fuck it. Trying to avoid accountability and downplay your actions won't work. I'll meet your lawyer tomorrow, Sarah. You should, too. Why, she inquired. Why do divorcing people require lawyers? Need one. I said she squealed and collapsed. She cried for five minutes before speaking after I said nothing. She wailed, I don't want divorce, Shell, please. What's your divorce reason? Tell you I'd do anything. You're afraid to admit your mistakes. You're making excuses and downplaying your cheating, I told her. That didn't happen. She resisted. You were hurt, I see. Again, sorry. My goal is to show you that I solely love you. I don't care about them. You're mine. Were you eager to sleep with me for strangers? Are you saying that? Is that intended to help? She cried. I don't understand. I'll say what you want. I only want to say anything to get your forgiveness again. Ask me to say something. What about? 
Excuse me, Sheldon. I erred, but not again. Sorry, yeah. I'll never repeat my mistake. Shell, may I return home? Without you, I die. I hate not being around girls. I'll attempt anything. Use the spare bedroom, your slave, my cooking. I'll cleanse. You can utilize me, however. With girlfriends or other means, you can get over it. Yeah, I can. Just told her. I found someone I like. I feared that. She suggested dating. Please bring her here and I'll cook. Shell, I'm serious. I'll do everything for you. Living with you and the girls is all I want. Please allow me to retrieve you. No more men in my life. I deserve revenge and punishment. I'll endure my strokes without complaint. Please allow me. Think about it. Just told her. Tomorrow I'll call to tell you my decision. Don't talk to the girls. Will not. Do what you say. Thanks for talking, Sheldon. I don't deserve it. Nice chap, but I'm using you. There's nothing I can do. I'm dying from family separation. That might have been worth considering. Just forget it. I won't strike. Sarah, please talk to someone. Talk to pastors, rabbis, counselors, anyone. I question your morality. You do it? She said I'll do anything. I spent most of the night wishing she wouldn't return. I stayed up thinking she couldn't be serious about what she did and that it means nothing to her. How could I accept her back if she didn't realize her mistake? All she regretted was hurting me and almost losing her family. There were so many issues that I didn't know where to start. Girls were to blame. Could I damage my girls' lives? They kicked their mother out? Uncertain about my next move, I fell asleep. Morning clarity came. Mom was great and girls liked her. Such treatment wasn't deserved. I had to improve their lives. Living with a cheating whore would harm them, I was sure. I took the day off when the girls woke up by calling work. I said I'd pick them up from school to discuss life's hardest conversation. The truth about their mother's infidelity was kept from them. I basically informed them we had difficulties to resolve. She won't live with us, and we hope to resolve our issues. Some cried like someone died. They initially blamed me for the mess. My explanation that I didn't do anything made them see the error. Was mom wrong? Query Kimbra. Did she cheat, dad? You won't hear anything terrible about your mom. I told them she loves you and you shouldn't blame her. Nothing to do with you girls. You're the best females ever. We love you deeply. Give me time to resolve things. We chatted for a while after they reluctantly agreed. Lunch with Sarah was arranged by phone. I confused her when I said I needed time alone. Every time I see you, Sarah, I become mad. She should avoid me, I advised her. I'll never forget your act. I may have lost family relationships because of you. I'm divorcing Sarah. Please visit the females whenever you like. According to our prenup, the innocent party keeps the house if we cheat. No money shortage. I'll accomplish that. Bitch appeared on stage. She abused me and threatened to turn the girls against me and sue me. I departed wishing her well. Carly contacted me after school anxious about the girls. She worriedly observed they weren't in school. I assured her things were all right, and she asked to chat to me on Saturday. I planned to attend a Saturday car race. She agreed when I suggested going. Sarah picked up the girls, and I picked up Carly in the morning. She looked stunning again. Conversation was abundant throughout the 50-mile journey. She finally cried and told me her story. A local businessman was her fiancé. They fell in love in high school. She was glad. Seeing the groom in the dressing room with one of her bridesmaids during the wedding made her think she missed some apparent clues. She went silently and drove away. Nobody in her hometown spoke to her. She moved here and became a teacher at the girls' school. Her emotions were raw and the memories searing, so I understood her feelings, described my and Sarah's situation. After I finished, her eyes filled with tears and mine did too. Her head rested on my shoulder. She had big mop hair, about a foot of curls protruded in all directions. While at the show, my mom called. Sit and talk, Sheldon. Calling a family meeting, she said. We'll meet at the house with Gail and Helen when they arrive by car. Is asshole coming? Asked. Your brother has news. Her words. I foretold it. Don't call me again, Mom. Stop it, Sheldon. Her plea. Okay. His absence. Will you arrive? Please wait. Just told her. Carol tried to gain my attention. Address them, Sheldon. Her words. It's the only way forward. Talk to family? Asked, bitterly smiling. I know I should. And you should. Mom, when's the meeting? Asked. Dinner tonight at six? Her words. Zero supper. We agreed to meet at 730. I stopped talking. I enjoyed looking at cars with Carly, who held my hand. After talking on the way home, 
I invited her to stop by so I could tell her everything. I dropped her off at her place as promised. I was terrified. Coming home to an empty house, I tried to eat. The sole effect was stomach distress. Took two antacid advertisements. I started the old charger back up. This felt right, and the humming relaxed me. They probably heard me from a block away and Mom got there before. I stood still like a pillar as she hugged me. I saw tears in her eyes when she looked up. No word from her. Just led me inside by the hand. I saw my dad with a baseball bat at the door after the lock clicked. He warned about letting obstinate pride destroy this family. Get down. This would be intriguing. Gail and Helen, my sisters, carried me and sat me down. Out of Mom's bedroom, three cheaters emerged. I looked at Mom. Your bro. You married her. Your in-law sister, Chloe. Her words. We can overcome. Okay, Mom, you lost your son and had two grandchildren, not my brother. He's a git. She's whore. I suppose Mom is a whore. We adore Shell, Gail said. Want anything? We'll agree. Want to go. Will you remain with me tonight? Meet someone, please. Girls. Thought you'd help. Slut. My mom panicked. Yes, Sheldon will be helped, Helen remarked. Your thoughts? These scumbags needed our help. We stood and headed out. I hit the pimp when he moved the bat. Screaming like a horse, he dropped the bat and fell. I turned around with the bat. This jerk saw death in my eyes and ran through the kitchen and out the back door. Turned bitch. Wide-eyed, she chased her asshole husband. Throwing back my head, I laughed. You're being sued for wrongful imprisonment. I advised bitch's mom not to call, write, or send postcards to the girls. All of you will be restraining ordered. Kneeling, she cried hysterically. Avoid this, Sheldon. I apologize. Let me compensate. The time has passed. Just told her. You had chance. Selected side. Best of luck in life. Too bad you'll spend it with cheaters. A restraining order will cover you. Slout, you're mentally disturbed, and I'll never leave the girls with you again. Helen grabbed the twins upstairs. They glanced oddly at everyone, but said nothing. Slut was hysterically crying without speaking. I left the home, went down the driveway with the girls. You want to drive? inquired Gail, throwing her the keys. She squeaked happy. Really? Show. Always desired. Never let me. You chose well, telling them I love my tiny sisters. Allow them to drive my autos. We got Chinese food on the way home, and Helen tried to choke us. On the way out, I contacted Kaylee, and we got her food. She entered the room, and the twins ran to her. Each held her hand and carried her to their aunts. Our teacher is Miss Brooks. Kaburis introduced her. She may be Daddy's girlfriend. Carly was adorable and blushing furiously. Conver, we're buddies. Saying that is unnecessary. Mom cheated, so we want you with Daddy, according to Carmen. Enough, girls. Criticized them. You're embarrassing our visitor. You and I should sleep together. Daddy, sorry, soft chorus, Aunt Helen. Gail read us a book. After taking their aunts upstairs, they left Carly and me awkwardly silent. She looked frightened when I approached. Her hands were in mine as I hugged her. She pressed against me, her curls tickling my chin. Carly, how about it? muttered. Will you be my girlfriend? Looked into my eyes with a tilt. Gold sparkled in huge brown eyes. Possibly, she whispered. She said, I won't be with you until you're with her. Understand. I'm not Carly, I told her, and I'm not going to be her. Working takes time, all this out. I have the rest of my life, she said. The next morning I went to see a lawyer. Her name was Marcy Gray and she was very rude. I think at first she thought I had left my wife for a status upgrade. She was in her 40s. I wanted her to like me, but we started off on the wrong foot. If you came here to avoid paying child support, you need another lawyer. Were the first words out of her mouth that pissed me off. Okay, that's not why I'm here, but thank you for having me. I stood up and walked out. I stopped at her receptionist's desk and asked how much the reception cost. She opened her mouth, but Ms. Gray interrupted her. What the hell is going on with you? She shouted. You can't just leave like that. Watch me. Just told her. I don't know who you think you are, lady, but you can bite me. I don't have to listen to insults, especially from the people I hire. Back off. She puffed up like a toad frog. She opened her mouth, then started laughing. She laughed until she was in tears, then came over and took my hand. Sorry. She wiped away her tears of laughter. Sometimes I forget that there are decent men in the world. I see so many assholes every day that I forget. No one has talked to me like that in years. Please accept my apologies. Come back and talk to me. Tell me what's going on. 
Despite my misgivings, I let her walk me back into the office and she poured me a very nice whiskey. I told her the story and she got rude again, but mostly against my ex-family and slut. She called the receptionist and asked her to bring the forms. I paid her fee and signed 10,000 times. She promised that the restraining order would be obtained. The same day and the divorce would begin as soon as possible. She shook my hand and the case proceeded. Three days later, the hooker was sued and my ex was charged with unlawful restraint and terroristic threats. The pimp was even charged with attempted assault for his actions with a baseball bat. The asshole and his wife were charged with willful infliction of mental anguish, and life went back to normal. The twins were with me, and Hooker was forbidden to come within 500 feet of us. When I went out to get the newspaper on Saturday morning, she was standing at the end of the block. She saw me and yelled, Sheldon, please let me see my babies. Please. Really sorry. This wasn't my idea. Please, I'm begging you. Let me see my babies. A few neighbors came outside to see what all the screaming was about. I walked over to her and she fell to her knees in front of me. Please, Sheldon, I'm begging you. I'll crawl up to the house if you want me to. Please let me see the girls. Get up, Sarah, just told her. You're embarrassing yourself and me. I don't care about myself. She said, I know I've lost you, Shell. I can't lose my children. I won't embarrass you anymore. Please, just for five minutes, let me see them. She clung to me and I lifted her to her feet. Okay, you can see them, I told her. Sarah, I told you that you could see them anytime you wanted to. And then you went and did that shit at my parents' house. I swear to God, one more crazy moment like that and you'll be done. Do you grasp? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And I won't. I won't do anything crazy. Thank you, Shell. I'll be good. We got back to the house and the girls were eating waffles. They ran up to her and she knelt down and hugged them like life preservers in a hurricane. She sobbed heartily and told them over and over how sorry she was and how much she loved them. They cried a little, too, and told her how much they missed her. I made her breakfast, and we all sat around the bar and ate. She promised them and me that she would be their mom like before, but she wouldn't live with us. I think they understood and agreed to stay with her every weekend. I told her she could come over any time during the week if she wanted. They left to watch TV, and we sat and talked for a while. Sheldon... She started. I'm really sorry about what happened at your parents' house. I didn't want to do it. But your mom said we could fix it. Now I realize that's impossible. I know I hurt you too much, but I'm in my right mind now, and I just want you to give me as much of a relationship as you want. I want to be a friend. I want more than that. But I realize it's not going to happen. I'll just be the best friend you've ever had. I'll be the girl's mom, and we'll move on with our lives. I signed the divorce papers and I'm not fighting it. Financial matters are in order. I'm going to move into one of our apartments. One will be vacated next week, and it's a nice one. Can we be friends and co-parent, Sheldon? We'll have to work on being friends. I told her most of my friends aren't. No, never mind. I'll try, Sarah. I'll honestly try. I just have a lot of bad feelings about you right now. I'm sure time will heal a lot of it, and we'll get along just fine. Just so you know, I'm not going out with you again, Sarah. If you really gave it up, I'm sure we'll be fine. The first time you go on a date, you'll come and tell me about it, and then I'll trust you to move on. Then we'll start working on becoming friends. Okay. There were tears in her eyes, but she nodded and hugged me. I felt sorry for her, but it was beyond me. I offered to drive her home, but she said she parked on the next street over at the door. She turned around and looked back. I'm sorry, she said. I know. Just told her. I am too. Don't apologize, Sarah. I believe you. Let's just move on. I forgive you. I'm still mad, but I'll get over it, okay? She smiled, nodded, and left. She came over on Monday and Wednesday, and on Friday I let the girls go out to eat with her. We seemed to get into a regular rhythm, and things seemed to be going well. The next week I got a call from Marcy Gray saying that my ex-family's lawyer had talked to her and wanted to set up a meeting. I declined, but she said it was in everyone's best interest, so I agreed. The only condition was that asshole wasn't there. Everyone agreed, and we sat around Marcy's conference table. They were all very remorseful and full of remorse. They wanted me to drop the charges against them, and we're willing to do almost anything to make it happen. I told them that if they would sign agreements to never contact me or talk to me again, agreed to never talk to or contact girls again, and that if the pimp would let me kick him in the balls again, I would drop all charges except those against those warrants. 
Marcy liked that very much, and they agreed to all the terms except the last one. Chloe and Mom agreed, but the pimp didn't want to. For some reason, he probably needed to have a baseball bat in his hand to feel comfortable having his scrotum needed. Mom threatened to kick him herself, and he finally agreed. Macy gasped, and I told him I wasn't going to do it right away, but he had to be ready. They signed the papers and walked out as soon as the door closed. Marcy broke out into a mad giggle. I told her that a woman shouldn't giggle like that, and she ran off to the bathroom. When she came back, she was calm until she saw me and it pissed her off again. Sheldon, you're such an idiot. Gasped. You almost made me shit my pants. You know I can't write about this in the papers, right? I chuckled. Well, yeah, but I like the idea of him worrying about whether or not I'm coming after him tonight. You're a hard-ass dude, she finally soothed. Are you going to stick to that? You have no idea what I've put up with because of asshole over the years. I told her he's stolen my toys, gotten me in more trouble than you can imagine, and it's all been fine with them. Jesus, Marcy. He entertained my wife, and that was fine with them. The problem was my stubborn pride. I'm done with them. I hope they all die alone and in misery. I guess I don't blame you, she said. The divorce will be final in 60 days. What will you do then? Move on. Just told her. I have a few plans. I even have a few plans for asshole. She looked at me incredulously. You won't need a criminal defense attorney, will you? God, I hope not, was saying. Are you any good at anything? I do. Family law, she said. I'll bail you out, but I'll have to recommend a colleague if you're charged with a crime. I didn't expect to be charged. This asshole was coming out of a bar one night and three masked men jumped him and dragged him into an alley. They beat him to a pulp, paying particular attention to his genitals. The police report says they asked him a question over and over again, and he couldn't understand it. It was. What's the frequency, Kenneth? They must have thought he was Dan Rather. He said he didn't know any Kenneth and had no idea who they were or what their frequency might be. I was with Sarah and the girls at the time, and no one questioned me. After he was released from the hospital, he was home while Chloe out of town. And then there was a home invasion. He was beaten up again, this time by four guys. The questions were different. They kept asking him why he wasn't wearing. He had no idea what socks were supposed to be, so they played ping pong with his balls. I was on a date with Carly. A month later, he was ambushed in the parking lot at work. He couldn't quantify the number of assailants, but they asked how often he did it and again disapproved of his choice of socks. I was at the twin soccer game, Sarah. I was questioned by the police that time. Assassination attempts seemed to be a favorite of jealous husbands, but I had a solid alibi for all the attacks. Two months later, his car started having problems three times a week for two weeks when he came home from work. It would get a flat tire, mysterious holes in the sidewalls, maybe the size of ice picks. Security guards started watching the car, and it regained the ability to keep air in the tires while he was working. But as soon as he went into an ore bar or left it alone for a minute, the problems resumed. Injector problems took it out of service for a while due to the presence of mothballs in the fuel. The repairman said the mothballs in the gas tank were probably the cause. How it got there remains a mystery. A month later, his grill exploded when he tried to fire it up. There was a gas leak, and for a time he lost his eyebrows and eyelashes, as well as the front of his hairbrush. This streak of bad luck continued until the climax came when the airbag in his car unexpectedly deployed, causing him to crash into a tree. Of course, by then, the airbag had deflated and he was injured and hospitalized. His wife, the lovely Chloe, decided that his bad luck might be starting to affect her and filed for divorce. He was afraid to step outside the threshold of his home and took a job in Cleveland selling tires. My life was going great. The divorce went smoothly, and I was a free man. For about a month, Carly and Sarah walked around each other like two cats. But one day, Sarah asked her out for drinks and dancing. Sarah had a date, and she asked Carly to tell me about him. He was an accountant, and Carly said his name was Bob. She. He was a nice guy and quite handsome. The girls got along pretty well with each other, and the tension in the house eased when they were there at the same time. After that date... I started taking Sarah out to lunch about once a week, and we became good friends again. We talked about munchkins and how the work was going, and I remembered how much I enjoyed talking to her. She seemed to be doing well, and she told me that she really liked Bob. We didn't talk about the past much, and that was good.
The Saturday after the divorce was finalized, Sarah took the girls and I went with Carly. We drove up into the mountains and hit a big local festival. We walked around, looked at crafts, ate local food, and rode a few carnival rides. That evening I took her dancing, and around 1 a.m. we got quite good and went out. When I dropped her off, she invited me in and I didn't hesitate. She stopped in the living room and I jumped into bed with her. She tilted her head to look at me. Sheldon, I'm in love with you, she whispered. And do you love me more than you can imagine? Just told her. I thought I'd never be happy again. Carly, I was wrong. My girls make me happy. And you make me happy. I really do love you. I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I should. Sends us runs a thank you card. She laughed. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm happy here with you too. We whispered about what nothing meant and what everything meant until we fell asleep with this gorgeous woman in my arms. Two months later, she moved in with me and the twins rode to school with her every day. Six months later, I realized I couldn't live without her, so I bought her a ring. I told the girls I was going to ask her to marry me, and I couldn't believe how excited they were. She was their idol, and they worshipped at her altar. I called Sarah. She wasn't thrilled, but said she wanted me to be happy. I found out that Bob had asked her a question, and she had put it off. She said she was going to say yes, and I wished her well. I hoped she had learned something from her experience, and Bob wouldn't go through what I had to go through. I didn't say anything of the sort. I took Carly to a nice Italian restaurant and put the ring on. She squealed, and there were no more questions. When we got home, the girls were already waiting for us, and they were full. Can we call you Mommy? asked Kamburis. We already have a mom, but we decided we wanted to call you Mommy. Carly knelt down and snuggled up to them. Thank you, girls. I'm so honored. I have loved you from the day I met you. You will always be my little girls. I'm not trying to take your mom's place, but I would be proud to have two angels. You call me mom. We got married. It's been a year, and I love her more and more every day. I have never been happier. Sarah married Bob, and they had baby boy. I have never heard of the former family, and I don't think I ever will. My sisters occasionally mention them, but they have nothing to do with them either. Sometimes you just have to live with your choices. They made theirs, and I made mine. The worst day of my life was pretty bad, but I have a feeling the best days are yet to come. Carly is going to make sure of that. Thank you for taking the time to hear today's story. If you enjoyed the article, please like and subscribe if you have not already. If you have a story to offer about your own or someone else's situation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Please be careful.